Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but in reality, the Tim Dillon thing was real. It was April 1st. But, uh, yeah, I think my world, my family's world, and I think the world in general was somehow fundamentally changed on February 24th this year when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. I think, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about it. I've been talking to a lot of people about it. I have family in both countries. I come from both countries. And um, first and foremost, it made me realize that a global hot war is within a possibility for the century. That we're not so far from a World War III outbreaking. No. And the reason I realized this is because of the... Be- behavior of the United States in response to this humanitarian crisis, this invasion, and the response of China that's currently quietly watching, but for the most part supporting Putin and Russia. India, for the most part, is supporting Putin and Russia. And so you have this division in in the world. You just look at the, the population, the large economies, large military forces, nuclear powers, are just watching this conflict, watching this humanitarian crisis, and nobody seems to be shy about escalation. Nobody seems to be shy about mentioning, uh, you know, the word nuclear. And it just feels like what I've been, I reread recently as a kind of therapy, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Shire. He's a journalist that was there for um, for the, the rise of the Nazi party and the World War II and everything like that. And you just have to put yourself let's say 100 years back, 1922, nobody would predict World War II. In fact, everybody would be sure that World War II would never happen. Surely there will never be another world war when you're sitting there in the 1920s. And at the same time, you have Hitler, young Hitler, what is it, 1919 maybe, he is employing number seven of the Nazi party. So he's the seventh person to join uh, the National Socialist German Workers Party that ended up being one of the most uh, consequential parties ever, uh, political parties ever. So from a party of seven people, 20 years later, you have a party that's threatening the existence of human civilization. If they had nuclear weapons, that would be the case. So in, t- in the span of 20 years, that can happen. So now we're sitting here in 2022 the possibility of nuclear war seems to be not as distant as at least I, with my innocence, had imagined. And the possibility of hot war is not that distant. And there's escalation. There's warmongering going on. And at the same time, um, just the humanitarian crisis. I mean, on a personal level, it's the biggest humanitarian crisis. Six, seven million people, refugees, eight million people inside Ukraine displaced. The biggest one since... um, in Europe, at least, since World War II. So that's one perspective, that this there's this uh, authoritarian who invaded a sovereign land and laid claim on it. That's a, I recently talked to two folks that have this different perspective. One is Stephen Kotkin, who's a historian of Stalin. I highly recommend people read his biography of Stalin. And then the other was is Oliver Stone, who you talked to, mostly about JFK. But he also interviewed Putin, so Oliver Stone's perspective is, look, first of all, America throughout its history has blood in its hands. NATO is pressuring through its expansion, pressuring Putin, pressuring the other non-NATO regimes. And so they um, bear some responsibility for this. And, you know, you look at post-9-11 wars, the in, uh, in Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, the number of refugees there, it, um, the the number of people displaced from their, from their homes is close to forty million people. Forty million people, and the number of dead is over a million people. And those are wars either started or catalyzed or propped up by the United States. That's the Oliver Stone perspective. You know, this this idea that the United States is the good guys is a complicated one. 
And so he has been, starting from the Vietnam War, a critic of the military-industrial complex and this kind of imperial imperative of the United States. That's that perspective. Then you have Stephen Kotkin, you have just the Western perspective is like, no, yeah, America has blood in its hands, but you can't do this moral, um, it, there's no moral equivalence here. There is good guys and bad guys in the world. The good guys are flawed, yes, but the reality is uh, Putin's Russia is an authoritarian regime, no respect for freedoms of all kinds, including freedom of the press and freedom of speech. There's a lot of uh, basic violation of human rights, and there's just a straight-up invasion of a sovereign land, and that's a war crime, and Putin is a war criminal. And I'm much closer to that perspective, but it's not factual, it's more emotional, because I just see how much pain there is in that place. Um, I, you know, I've been listening to a lot of people crying, angry, afraid. Um, yeah, it, 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 for, for me, there's been just so much personal emotion because this idea that we're all one people, we're all one humanity has been challenged for me personally. I know there's a lot of suffering in the world. I know there's a lot of atrocities in the world, but for me, it's just because I know directly the people, um, it's like, uh, you know, there's been recently a couple of shootings. There's been a shooting yesterday in the United States. It's different when you have nothing to do with the people when then you, you directly know the people. Yeah, the shooting's an hour and a half away. 